Hi guys, hope your day is going well. Uh, we're back here to continue with the boot modeling and texturing. Uh, if you don't mind, to drop us a, a like and a subscribe if you haven't done so and hit that notification bell. Uh, sometimes my updates are a little bit spotty, but I try to get them up when I can. So hopefully you enjoy this one and uh, let's, let's go. What I'm doing here is basically bringing the boot into 3D Studio Max. Uh, from Maya for laces so uh, I prefer the 3d studio max curves and converting them to polygons I think it works so much nicer uh, if you if you saw my um, my train tutorial you'll see that I, I did the same thing with that for the sort of pipes and stuff that are underneath the train well, same concept here. I just like the way the curves in 3D Studio Max work a lot better. So what I'm doing here, as you can see, is just sort of laying out the overall flow of the laces. I'm not trying to get too detailed right now. As you can see, it's very sort of uh, angular and geometric here. Um, and then from there, I can then go ahead and start to refine. And this is where those, uh, you know, curve tools in 3D Studio Max come in handy um, as you can see you can add in extra points at any time so the key again as as with just standard modeling is to start uh, low resolution and then work your way up to adding more don't try to add it all at the beginning um, now what you see happening here is I'm using the insert tool for the line uh, to insert extra vertices and what's happening is that my vertices get uh, placed on the grid from the angle that I'm inserting them, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I believe later on I uh, figured out a faster way to do it, but this is this is how I started out on this. Um, make sure to save your file. Always save your file. And as you can see, if you turn on the Enable in Viewport checkbox there, you can actually show the curve as, as a polygon tube, which is why I like to use this method for cables and pipes and things like that. And, and in this case, laces, because it works really well. Uh, with Maya curves, you have to, con you know, you have to extrude a, uh, a circle down the path of the, of the curve and then tell it to output to polygons. It's, it's, it's a bit of a hassle. Whereas with 3D Studio Max, it's, it's um, it's sort of built in you're not really doing nerves here so it works it works really well so for me this is the method that I chose to use so it, all it is at this point is just moving stuff into position we sort of laid it out very roughly now we need to start to refine that a little bit again I'm not trying to go too crazy too quickly you just um, want to start to refine it bit by bit just adding what you need to get it done for that particular part. Uh, what you'll notice with this video here, actually before I, s I talk about that, you'll see now I'm using the refine button to add in those points. It's, it's something that I figured out in the middle of recording the video. Instead of using insert, I use refine because insert again It'll insert the point, but it'll snap it to the grid from the angle, from so your camera angle in, in the viewport, which is really annoying because then you got to go get that point from the grid and bring it back to where it should be. But then using the refine setting just inserts that point right in the middle of the, uh, the curve where it is. So much more convenient. Um, so definitely I, I uh, recommend that, one, that way over doing the... Uh, insert method.
but yeah so far again I'm just threading the curves through the lace holes there trying to make sure I'm laying out the overlapping of the laces correctly like it would be on a real shoe and I actually had to bring out my own boot I don't have this exact boot but I had to bring out a boot just to see exactly you think you know you kind of you think you understand it until you have to try to model it then you start to realize that maybe I should actually look at a boot so obviously getting reference is always a big deal is always a big thing so make sure you do get that reference um, there we go using the refine tool again it's it's really really nice tool because it just plops in the point right where you click instead of on the grid so as you can see i can now sort of extend the laces any way that i want and i'm keeping things angular you notice i'm not i'm not you know messing with bezier handles and, and trying to get you know curves in there just yet uh the key is to you know save that stuff for later keep it angular because it's very simple that way and then you can you can add the actual curvature to the laces at a later time so just sort of laying things in right now uh with these laces i'm just running them into the to the inside of the boot uh reason being that it just gets them out of the way i don't want to have to deal with trying to simulate laces flopping around um plus uh the boot itself the top of it is going to be covered by the character's pants anyway so just getting those the ends of those laces out of the way to where if you know the pants did happen to ride up a little bit where you could see the top of the boot the, the laces would just disappear into the inside of the boot and wouldn't be a problem um the character's pants are, go are going to be cloth simulated. So it is very possible with a character walking around that those the, those pants might sort of ride up beyond the top of the boot. So it's good to just keep things clean, have that, that lace, those laces going into the boot. Um, I really didn't feel like trying to do a knot, you know, as if the laces were tied in a knot. I just thought that was... That's a whole lot of time that I'd have to spend on something that's not really that important. So that is something that you always got to think about is, is you prioritize all the things you want to do. If you're a modeling artist, you know, trying to break into the industry, you want to, you know, get noticed, then yeah, absolutely do that. You know, do the laces, show, show that you can, you can do that kind of detail. Uh, for me, that's not really the situation I'm in. This is just a personal project. And it's it's really not that important that I have a character with visibly uh, tied laces with with the, the knot and everything, because again, where the knot would be, which is be you know near the top of the boot, it, it'd be covered by their pants. So it's you know I could spend all that time to do it and then end up covering it up with the pants, which would kind of be ridiculous. So when you're actually in a production especially if you're working by yourself as I as I'm doing here you really have to prioritize and decide what is important and what isn't and don't spend your time on things that aren't really going to pay off for you in the end because that is time that could be spent doing other things <clears throat> so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to continue to refine I just add points and then start to you know adjust the shape in a more refined fashion and you'll see that I go back and forth between turning on the the polygon shell of those laces and turning it off um, and the reason I turn it back off is because accessing the points with the polygons over the top of it is can be quite annoying so I'll just turn it on have a look see how I like it and then turn everything off again um, and then another consideration is as I'm curving the the laces or the lace curve through the the holes in the boot I have to offset those curves by what is what will ultimately by be the thickness of the lace right so if the lace has a certain amount of thickness I need to have that in the back of my head as I'm running these things through and where the laces sort of cross over the top of each other I got to keep that in mind because uh, the curve is is going down the exact center of the lace but there is that sort of radius value or the diameter i guess 
of the lace that needs to be taken into account. So you'll notice that none of the curves are actually touching the loops, the, 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 uh, the lace loops there. Uh, and that's because I have to take into account that the lace itself is going to have some thickness where the curve does not. Okay, so that is definitely a consideration, and as again, you can see the laces are coming back. You'll see that there's still some interpenetrations between laces and also between lace and the tongue of the, of the boot. Okay, but again, you, you know, you have to, again, keep in mind that a little bit of penetration is not going to kill you. Um, if this if this shoe was going to be you know large on screen um, for some reason, then I might take a little bit more care. Again, it's a it's a matter of time management and making sure that you are not spending time that you really can't afford to spend. Now here you'll notice that I I realized that I'd messed up and I need to reroute these laces. So that's that's what this is here. So sometimes, you know, you think you've got it and you realize that, oops, uh, you know, you messed up something. You know, just go through, fix it. Um, not a big deal. This is pretty quick. I actually deleted a segment there. Um, and here I'm just going through deleting stuff so that I can fix it because I did not run the laces correctly in this section. Okay, and then you can connect points by welding them together. So to, to close off or fusing it. I think it was fuse that I should have used. By closing them off there. Okay, so it can be a pain in the butt sometimes to, to mess up like that. But, you know, it is what it is. You just work with it, fix it, and keep going. For those of you that are somewhat due to 3D Studio Max, I really do recommend 3D Studio Max as, as a software, as three for 3D software because it is very powerful as a modeler at least. Um, haven't really done. I'm not much of an animator. I don't really enjoy animation. That's not really what I do. I'm, I uh, I'm more of a modeler. I also play with you know dynamic simulations and things like that. Animation has just never really appealed to me, so I've never really gotten good at it. Um, it it's the it's tedious, which is I know it's it's kind of ironic, given that it, pretty much everything in this field is is tedious to do, whether it's modeling. But th there's some tedium that you can handle and some that you can't. Uh, that's just how the way it is. You got to find what what works for you. And animation it was just never fun for me. Um, I've always found it tedious and boring, and just is annoying to do. But modeling, while it can also be tedious, was fun for me. Just sort of creating something was always very interesting for me. So this is my kind of tedium, if you will. Um, so you know, modeling is kind of my thing. And then here you can see I'm trying to get those laces to feel like they're sitting on top of each other or one sitting on top of the other. Uh, and then also making it feel like those laces are going underneath those loops there. Uh, you'll see there's still some gaps where the lace isn't actually touching the the hold of the of the uh, the lace loop there, I guess you could call it. Um, and that's all things that that'll be fixed eventually. You gotta you gotta make it feel like there's some, some tension in there. So laces touching the loops is is kind of important. And I'm adding in points as needed. Um, you know, I only add these things in as I need them. 
If I need to just refine that curve to make it feel better, you see that I go into wireframe here to do that. Make sure that that lace doesn't disappear into the tongue of the shoe, which can happen. So I'll actually start to add in quite a few points in there. So you see that there's a gap and then I close it off right there so that that lace is actually touching the loop there. Okay, so again, start low and work your way up to higher resolution. Refine the refine the shape as you go. And again, using 3D Studio Max is really nice because it does it's sort of a real-time connection between the polygons and the curve and you can turn that on and off and you can adjust the curve and it works really well so yeah 3co max is a really nice modeling platform um, in some ways i think it's better actually at modeling than maya is i've gotten to the point where i can model in either but in, in sort of my earlier days in 3d 3d studio max was my go-to um, and then I started using Maya more when I got to when I went to school for animation. But I started out in 3D Studio Max, um, and that was the one that really made me enjoy the modeling process. Was playing around in 3D Studio Max and learning some of these techniques. Okay, so continuing to adjust those laces it, it, it is a it is a time-consuming thing um just to get those laces to feel like they're sitting on there you know correctly will take up some time but again you don't want to overdo it you don't want to spend days working on laces when the laces are not the important part of the the whole thing if you are working for a shoe company you work for nike and you got to model some shoes for a commercial then yeah you're going to take the time to make everything perfect but in my case that's not really what i'm doing here so i'm gonna just do i'm gonna make it good enough knowing that that shoe is not going to be in the shot i think i do have one shot that's a close-up of of the boot walking by but it's i think it's you see the boot from the back if i remember correctly and, and it's going to be in a dark room so you know, knowing ahead of time what the thing is for. I mean, if you're just modeling this for your modeling reel, yeah, go ahead and, and go crazy, go ham on it. But if this is for an actual animation project, then knowing ahead of time what what you need and how close that thing is going to be to the camera ultimately will inform how much time and detail you put into the model. Uh, this is very important. Save yourself time. Time is one thing that you need a lot of to work in this industry so wasting it on things that aren't going to be seen on camera um, is is never a good idea you only use the time for the things that you need to make sure you use it for so you know think about that think about that as you model uh, and, and not just modeling either pretty much any part of the 3d uh, production pipeline you got to think about what you're using the thing for uh, same with with animation for example you're not going to animate a character's legs moving when they're walking if the if if they're not going to be on camera right there's no point it's just it's wasted time so you know you you, you try to think about those types of things anywhere that you can save yourself time and work more efficiently is always going to be a plus that's what you need to do just because everything we do here takes so much time and it really does take a lot of time but that's how that's how this this uh this goes here so you know just hang in there and you'll get it <laughs>
So now I've made all the adjustments I want to the laces. The next thing I'm going to do is go into the vertex, select all of them, and set them to smooth. What that does is smooths out the curves. So instead of them being, you know, jagged hard curves, all those corners get smoothed out. Now you see how to undo it here um, to make some adjustments. But that'll be the next step here is to go in and smooth out all these curves because right now they're still very jagged so again we're going to try it again here select all the points select them set the spline interpolation to smooth and you can see it smooths everything out you also notice the poly count on the laces has actually gone up uh, that's because every time it it uh, curves those points to get it smooth uh, the resulting polygon geometry on the laces gets increased as well so you know not a big deal actually pretty good you'll notice that as i make adjustments if i add a point in there and move things around you'll see that dynamically the lace will get adjusted um in in its actual makeup like geometry so you know because of the way this is set up even after setting everything to smooth i can still go back in and adjust those laces and you can see as i bend the laces it'll increase or decrease the geometry dynamically as required so you can you can mess with that some of the segments are you know these long uh, spans without any curves so for those I actually go in and i put in points just to give me a little bit more geometry in there um, to refine those a little bit there because as you can imagine if this shoe's rigged and, and animated um there's gonna be a lot of bending going on in the, in the laces and in the shoe itself so you want to make sure you have enough geometry to cover all that okay so just just continue to refine the shape it's you know it's you're constantly refining to get things where you want we're adding geometry where you think you need it like i'm doing here and uh, you know the laces are looking pretty good now that they i've set them to smooth so they're not so sharp in the in the corners nice smooth transitions you'll see that these sections now i'm just going in i'm using the connect command just to put in geometry so i don't have these uh wide spans that are not subdivided and i think i messed that one up there i'll probably go back and fix it um, but yeah just going back up there and that one section is still messed up i, I guess i didn't see that in the video in the recording but it's something that's easily fixed. Okay, saving that. So now, now that I've got all that done, I save the, I export the laces out as OBJs to bring back into Maya. And then, 
use the Maya preset in the OBJ export options makes life easy and bring back into Maya and as you can see our laces are now there and then there's that section that I missed in 3d studio max but easily fixed just bridge and what I realized there's a bunch of uh, verts that aren't there just select the whole thing hit uh, backspace and it'll just delete the ones that it doesn't need and then bridge and tell it how many segments you want in between the bridge and that's fixed so I yeah, totally didn't see that in max um, and then I've, I use a poly reduce in Maya to drop down the poly count just a little bit so it wasn't so high um, you know it's just again laces being not that important I don't want to overdo it with the poly count and um, so there we have it that that's that's what the final laces look like now again you know there's two boots that are pretty much going to look exactly the same so when you mirror it over the other side you can always change them up a little bit all right so hope you guys enjoyed that and i'll see you in the next video